Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on Blue, my 55 gallon homemade DIY bin. All right, let's kind of look in, in on him and see what he's doing. So here we are, all uncovered, and let's just see what we can find right below the surface. If you watched the previous video recently, you saw that most of the paper was nowhere near being processed, and now it is starting to look like the finer paper is going away, and we're just being left with um, harder paper. Let me kind of slowly move you downwards here. Looking at the castings. Everything's looking really good. All right, let's see. What do we got growing here? Meh, probably a melon. All right, let me get you put up and we will take a proper look at everything and feed these guys up today. Alrighty, I will just start by doing some general just digging around and looking and seeing what we have. I think we probably went back to feeding that end of the bin last time, but we did have a really big worm ball at this end of the bin. Um, apple goo and such. So I just want to see how they're doing finishing that off. And I also want to make sure that nothing's becoming anaerobic and make sure that everything is staying nicely fluffed, which, you know, is all for the same reason, is to make everything the best texture for the worms to do their work. So I'm not seeing any worm ball here. Just looking. I do kind of still smell the citrus from two or three feedings ago. You probably can't see the very end of the bin at this end, so I'm moving it over this way so that I can kind of... It looks like it's drying out on the end, so I want to make sure that I'm incorporating that in with the more damp portions and get that underneath when I feed today. Looks like we still have a worm ball in the avocado. Not unusual. They do love their avocados. Now, you know, it's not necessary that you fluff everything up like this all the time like I do, but I'm uh, nosy, and I want to know what they're doing. Um, sometimes I leave them for weeks on end, and it drives me nuts. i got to see what they're doing. Most of the time, nothing bad happens if I leave them alone for that long, but... If I go on vacation or whatever, I usually try and make sure that everything is as in good of a shape as it can be before I need to leave them for any amount of time. If you go back in the playlist, you'll see that I did have quite a bit of um, almost, you know, completely done leaf matter that was in a barrel here in the basement. I had been pulling from it as a bedding source, and I don't know if I forgot about it or what my story was, but it was almost completely broken down and there was some native worms in there all by themselves taking care of it without any uh, input from me. Let me move you a little bit and we can continue going down this end of the bin, and hopefully we'll find our worm ball from our last feeding.
And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to incorporate this drier paper. And then everything has a better chance of getting used up. But I think we're getting closer to the feeding here, so I won't be as abrupt when I'm moving things. Let's see. There it is. I knew we were in the neighborhood. So there we go. It's today's worm ball consisting from the uh, apple goo that we put in last time. There's a tiny bit of apple goo left. But I've been trying to change where I feed from one end to the other so the worms keep moving. I don't want one part of the bin to finish up faster than the other. The idea is to get this to come to completion about the same time. Previously when I ran the 55 gallon bin I was running it as a wedge method and so in that case I was hoping to start at one end and then move to the other but when I had that rodent problem and I had to take everything apart and harvest it um, I decided on doing something different this time when I built blue back together I'm seeing a fair amount of worms over here looks like I've got some leaves that have matted together but the worms do still seem to be pretty interested must have been something in there. Hmm. Bonus worm ball. Didn't even know I was going to have it. But this is one of the reasons that I do go down there and flip everything is that the leaves, if they haven't been shredded 100%, um, they will kind of uh, lay like paper and become anaerobic and the worms won't get to them. Oh more worm ball from the apple goo I was wondering if I was going to run into those carrots but I still had I don't know if they just oh more worm ball I must have put in more than I remember So there is still quite a bit on this end. There's one of those little apples. But as I'm flipping things over, I am seeing leaves that are not incorporated. So I want to make sure to get them away from each other, mix those in with the paper. moisture is looking good and I want to make sure and keep it that way and if I don't do this turning um, I'm afraid that the leaves in particular won't get composted yeah I'm just catching quite a few of them that are stuck together This material is going to probably be ready before the end of the growing season, but it won't be ready for the beginning. Most of those leaves that I found in that barrel were pretty far along. So that's going to kind of escalate how quickly this is going. I will put the worm ball and the food that was left over from last time back where it was. And go ahead and cover them back up. And then I will move to this end for today's feeding. Kind of flatten things out again. 
I still don't think I need to add any new bedding. I mean, clearly it's pretty full. But I expect at some point when things warm up a lot more. Let's see, we're up to 60 degrees in the basement now. So as soon as it gets, you know, in the 65, 70 range, I really expect the worms to pick up their feeding. And uh, I will imagine that the levels on this bin will go way down. And I probably will still have to add more paper. So let me find them some food. All right, so today we're going to get some moldy bread, bananas, more moldy bread. And as you can tell, I've soaked this in water and got it very wet. Otherwise, okay, what the hell? Ugh, that's not right. All right, so got some limes. And because they have dehydrated, they're probably going to take a little bit longer. But the bread's important to get it very wet before you put it in the bin, or otherwise it just turns into a chunk of blue mold, and then you're waiting forever. Just going to pick up some of those larger things that I found scattered from out the bin, sprinkle them over the top before I give them their bubble wrap. So we'll just keep the worms moving left to right, front to back and hopefully I will have a huge amount of castings here probably moving towards the end of summer. Alright guys, well, apple. If you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up and if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.